ever felt like after 40, now that you're over 40, a whole it's a whole new ball game? I have, and I'm well over 40. Well, and you and I aren't alone. So let's today dive into 10 life hacks for women over 40, mastering self-love and relationships. We've been talking about self-love all weekend. Let's continue. We'll explore practical ways to navigate this exciting phase of life. And it is exciting. So grab a cup of tea and let's get started. Transformation in three, three two, two, one. Feeling stuck and looking for inspiration and motivation? Then our series, Daily Dose of Inspiration, is just what you need. Tune in for a few minutes every Monday and Wednesday and prepare to transform your mindset, boost your productivity, and unlock your true potential. This series is part of our groundbreaking tips program, packed with years of research, success stories, and proven techniques. We've condensed all this valuable information into bite-sized, actionable content that will leave you wanting more. What sets us apart? Join us each week and experience how Daily Dose of Inspiration can change your mindset and how you perceive the world. Trust us, your personal development journey will never be the same again. Ready to discover information that can be a game changer in transforming your life? Let's get started. Transformation in three, three, three. Let's talk about the unique challenges that we face as women over 40. Society has certain expectations of us. I remember when my son-in-law first met me and I was introduced as a grandmother, he was shocked because he didn't see me as his idea of grandmother. So that affects our self-esteem, the way um, people look at us. Our self-esteem might go through ups and downs and our relationships, they're always changing. But here's the good news. We have the power to shape our lives. So let's look at 10 of our superpowers to get us through this phase. And I have some friends to help me with that, to share with you some of these superpowers. Hack number one, establish a morning ritual. The way you start your day right can make all the difference. Create a morning routine that sets a positive tone for the day. Our friend Gloria shares how she starts her day. Hey, what's your morning routine like? What do you do first thing when you wake up in the morning? Do you have a specific routine that you follow? Do you just check, do you check your phone, um, check your messages, social media, etc.? Or do you have a sort of spiritual routine that you do? For me, I do a guided morning meditation prefer guided because it gives me focus it, it helps me to be more centered and it also helps me to set the tone for the day how am i going to be today am i going to be grateful am i going to be calm am i going to be focused as so my morning meditation gives me all of that to start my day it sets me up in the right tone the right mood for the day and it just it just gives me power and I'm, I'm totally totally upbeat for the rest of the day or maybe you prefer saying affirmations in the mirror a short walk around the block can also do wonders the key is to find what works for you and stick to it hack number two prioritize self-care should be the number one on everybody's list. It should be the foundation of everybody's life. I know it's mine. I need to take care of myself so I can have good physical and mental capacity to help take care of others. Yes. Wow, that was a good workout. Look at my sweat. Wow. Ooh. I'm a caregiver at heart and I love looking after others. But if I don't do the necessary things to preserve my body, I won't be able to do what I want to do. 
How can I give when I don't have anything to give? I cannot pour from an empty cup. So I have to ensure that I start looking after myself. Knowing who I am, building my self-esteem, getting enough exercise and enough sleep, learning how to say no when I really don't want to do something, and walking away from toxic people. Loving myself first will allow me to genuinely love others and give up my best to self and society. Taking care of yourself isn't selfish, it's necessary. Schedule regular me time in your calendar. This could be an hour to read your favorite book. Or maybe it's a spa day once a month. Whatever helps you recharge, make it a priority. You can't pour from an empty cup after all. Hack number three, set clear boundaries. Boundaries are crucial for our mental health and relationships. Colleen shares her thoughts on this one. Let's listen. Oh no, I'm sorry, not today. Not today. Those are words that you can see. Words that I see at times when I'm not in the mood or just don't feel like committing myself to something. I have my boundaries that must be respected and I, in return, respect other people's boundaries. Boundaries give me the empowerment to feel in charge of myself. You know, feel secure and have a healthy relationship. I like to express my feelings and I talk honestly about things. I believe whatever I say behind someone, I can say in front of them. That's just me. I try not to hurt others, you know, other people's feelings, but at the same time, I can be blunt. If it means that how oh, I think it needs to be done, it must be done. Um, what you see is what you get first. I will not change to suit you. So sorry. I will not change to, to suit anyone. So let's learn to know one another's boundaries and respect it. It will help you grow a healthy relationship for sure. Start by identifying what you're comfortable with and what you're not. Communicate these boundaries clearly and kindly. Remember, it's okay to say no without feeling guilty. Hack number four, cultivate body positivity. Our bodies change as we age, and that's perfectly normal. Gloria shares her thoughts on body positivity and body image. Let's listen. Is your body yours to embrace and love? Most definitely. Are we all the same? No, definitely not. Should we love ourselves the way we are? Most definitely. I embrace who I am. I embrace my body. I embrace how I look. And I know that I am awesome. I love myself. I love my body image. I love dressing up. I love dressing down. It, it doesn't matter. To me, my body is a temple and a temple that I take care of. Everybody is a good body. Go watch our video, The Ugly Truth About Beauty Standards, to get more hacks on body positivity. Shifting our focus from what we lack to what we have can be life-changing. Start a gratitude journal. Each day, write down three things you're thankful for. Let's hear what Abigail, one of the directors at the Daughters of Sheba Foundation, and a millennial has to say about keeping a gratitude journal. I think that the act of keeping, um, <clears throat> sorry, I think that the act of keeping a gratitude journal certainly helps to focus on the good things that are happening in, in my life, um, and kind of cast my worries aside for the moment. And the more that you're able to focus on things to be grateful for. The more things to be grateful for manifest in your life. Um, I often challenge myself to write down 30 things that I am grateful for at the end of the day. And at first it seems a bit 
challenging, so like 30 things. But once you get into a flow, you realize, okay, I'm grateful for, for the breakfast I had this morning. I'm grateful for the person that told me that I smelled so nice. Um, I'm grateful that I woke up. I'm grateful that I saw a rainbow. And you know, once you exercise, continually exercise that gratitude muscle. The troubles, you know, they might still be there, but they don't seem as big as you thought they were. And, um, like I said, the more things you can identify to be grateful for, you attract more good things because what you focus on, where you, where, um, your attention goes, you know, that's what you get more of. So, I definitely think it's a great practice to focus on gratitude and it definitely brings more abundance into your life and not necessarily financial abundance because that's what you tend to think of when you hear the word abundance but you know abundance can be an abundance of friendship an abundance of love um, you know so many things so many things can be classified as abundance, an abundance of, of good food to eat, yes, financial abundance as well, but I certainly think that journaling every day is a cathartic exercise and um, finding things to be grateful for each and every day. Hack number six, invest in relationships that matter. Let's hear what Colleen has to say about this. Do you invest in relationships that matters? Yes, we all might have a friend or a, a, a spouse. Some of us boyfriend or friend. Maybe it's a colleague or maybe it's a neighbor. They say the relationships protect our mental health and don't be in a state of life. Uh, yeah, I read that somewhere. I do agree with it though. However, it's easier said than done. It requires work by both partners, but it's doable. We have to be willing to share ourselves, right? Be willing to invest in that relationship, just like how you invest in anything else. But there are some things you need to know. You have to always respect each other, especially the boundaries, and with respect comes trust. Next thing is to be open and honest. That includes sharing a little secrets. And you have to know how to share it because you don't want to open a big Pandora box. So you have to be mindful of that because it can blow up in your face. So if you know each other, know each other well, then all should be well. Accept all of each other, the baggage and all. You know you, if you know you can't, then don't commit, just move on. Also be supportive at all times. Don't sweat the little stuff. Work on your communication skills with each other, and you'll be happy you did. Quality is more important than quantity when it comes to relationships. Nurture friendships that support and encourage you. It's okay to let go of relationships that drain your energy. Surround yourself with people who lift you. Remember, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Hack number seven, embrace lifelong learning. Keep your mind active and engaged by learning new things. Take up a new hobby or join an online course. Always wanted to learn Spanish? Now's the time. Learning keeps us young at heart and opens up new possibilities. Hack number eight, develop financial independence. There's power in understanding and managing your finances. Start by creating a budget if you haven't already. Look into investment options that align with your goals. Consider speaking with a financial advisor. Hack number nine, practice mindful communication. Good communication is the foundation of healthy relationships. Listen actively when others speak. Express your thoughts and feelings clearly and calmly. For Gloria, good communication is essential. Let's hear what she has to say on this. Communication is key for me in any relationship, whether it be a family relationship, friends, intimate relationships, all my relationships are important to me. But yes, communication is key in all instances, 
and not just saying what the other person needs to hear or not just saying what I think they want to hear, but being honest in my communications, being open in my communications at all levels of interaction, not just when you think, okay, no one else is listening at all levels of interaction, we need to be honest and open with each other. And that sets a tone as well and sets boundaries where there needs to be boundaries. So communication is key no matter what you're doing. Communication is key. Hack number 10, seek professional guidance when needed. Sometimes we all need a little extra help. There's no shame in seeking support from a therapist or counselor. They can provide tools to navigate complex emotions or help you work through relationship issues. Think of it as an investment in your personal growth and well-being. You most. So there you have it. 10 life hacks for mastering self-love and relationships after 40. Remember, it's never too late to start loving yourself more or to improve your relationship with others. Which hack resonated the best or the most with you? Share your thoughts in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more. Okay? Thank you for watching. And here's to loving ourselves and living our best lives after 40.